Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to Python tutorial 3 of the course Time Dependent Quantum Chemistry. In this uh, tutorial, we will go over Fourier transform of a wave function. How to, if I have a wave function already defined on the x grid numerically, then how to get the Fourier transform of that wave function. We need to uh, do this Fourier transform of a wave function in many occasions, particularly while solving. Mm, while finding out the numerical solution to the TTSE. So, we will go over it. In quantum mechanics, the Fourier transform is used to relate the position space and the momentum space wave function. So, I have to by doing this Fourier transform what we do basically in quantum mechanics particularly very frequently to relate the position space and the momentum space wave functions so position space uh, so if we want to convert from position space so, in the position space we know that we are expressing the wave function as psi x t and if we want to convert it to momentum space, so this is the equation which we use, this is the Fourier transform equation we use to for the forward Fourier transform. On the other hand uh, and, and we know that this, this kind of wave function in position space uh, in the programming language they can be presented in the grid representation. So, we will we'll see how to do that. So, this is your x grid. In the x grid, you have an wave function defined that is the psi xt, and if we want to convert it to momentum space, which means now in the momentum space, is, it is going to be uh, the same number of grid window, uh, so the, 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 grid, the same grid window, which means number of elements would be the same, but now this is, this is, this is your x grid and this is your k grid k grid is rep representing the momentum space and in the momentum space we have to find out what would be the representation of the wave function and this is going to be uh, phi k t. So, uh, position to momentum space Fourier transform and then inverse Fourier transform will give me again momentum space to position space. So, one can convert this to uh, representations very easily by doing this Fourier transform. The position space represents the x space which is the coordinate space and momentum space represents the k space where momentum space this k is defined by 2 pi by lambda which, which we will see uh, why the definitions are like that and we know that 1 by lambda is uh, is a wave number and uh, because it is wave number and it is multiplied by 2 pi that is why this k is considered to be the angular wave number. So, angular wave number is representing the momentum space um, which is nothing but 2 pi xi, xi is the uh, we will see that it is the frequency component which we are presenting here. So, this the, the meaning of this equations or representation will be cleared in the next slide. Let us assume that I have a peri periodic spatial structure. We are familiar with the uh, plane wave in time 
and plane wave is represented by uh, cos omega naught t like this and we know that this is the angular frequency uh, which is showing per uh, second uh, how many uh, angular cycles you have and uh, the uh, how quickly it is actually changing the uh, variation um, in the in the in the t axis similarly in the in the spatial structure when you when you have a spatial structure one can think about okay if it is a two dimensional spatial structure xy then one can think of um, periodic variation so where the line is uh, this line positions are actually the higher position it is more like on the x axis it is now going to be like this. So, let us say there is an hill and then is then there is a valley then there is a hill then there is a valley that this is the way periodic structure is changing uh, on the space and if I have the change then the change is controlled by how quickly the change is happening that is controlled by this k value. So, uh, this periodic spatial structure uh, can be represented by this uh, simple um, uh, k cos k x and if we can represent by cos k x then k x represents the, uh, the phase of the. So, this k x is going to be the phase of, of the spatial periodic structure it is it is called space and phase is nothing but an angle so this is representing an angle and this is why k this this k is representing the magnitude of the magnitude of the wave vector characterizing characterizing the nature of the periodic structure. This is this periodic structure not in time domain it is in the space domain. So, this is a spatial periodic structure. What we can note here is that if we have a lambda displacement linear displacement this is this is linear displacement. this is equivalent to uh, 2 pi uh, phase shift. So, this linear displacement along this direction can be correlated with an angular shift. So, what we can see here this point this arrow is now making 2 pi angle once this is making 2 pi angle I am actually moving from here to here. So, this linear displacement can be conveniently represented with respect to what is the uh, phase advancement I have in angle in terms of angle. So, if it is so then I will be able to write down k this linear advancement x plus lambda equals nothing but I had k x previous phase plus 2 pi phase extra phase I am adding or in our other words I can simplify this equation as 2 pi by lambda. So, what we are seeing is that k is the magnitude of k is related to 2 pi by lambda which is nothing but 1 by lambda this is 2 pi this xi function we use xi uh, notation to represent this spatial frequency. So, this xi 
is called the spatial frequency which is representing how quickly the periodic spatial structure repeats per unit length. We remember that in the in the time domain we have used nu as the uh, frequency, but here in the in the spatial domain we are using this xi as a uh, as the spatial frequency. So, if we if we have that um, then what we see is that this k is related, related to this spatial frequency xi and how to get this spatial frequency we will go over it. Uh, so, and, and this k is representing the momentum uh, space uh, in quantum mechanics. So, what we will do here uh, in order to convert this from position space to momentum space and momentum space to position space which is the inverse Fourier transform. We will make use of an efficient algorithm it is called fast Fourier transform algorithm. This is called so numerical implementation of Fourier transform through discrete um, Fourier transform it is called fast Fourier transform, F is the fast Fourier transform. So, this is the algorithm which we use FFT algorithm to transfer this um, function. So, basic, basic idea is that this is an analyt analytical expression and one cannot use this kind of analytical expression. We have to define we cannot use this minus infinity to plus infinity limit. We have to always uh, think about a uh, finite limit. So, in the finite domain we will say that x has a minimum value and x has a maximum value and this is the grid which we create first and on this grid we will represent psi x t and we know that how to represent this psi x t. Once we represent that psi x t um, uh, uh, in the uh, in in the position space. So, this, this is the space step number 1 how we are going to do perform this Fourier transform with the help of fast Fourier transform um, algorithm. So, first we have to represent the wave function in a finite grid and we know how to select those finite grids and when you are selecting the finite grids we have to make sure that the at the boundary of the grid the wave function should go to 0. And uh, because we cannot use uh, minus infinity to plus infinity limit in the finite grid um, in that numerical method. Now, once we have represented the wave function in the x grid, in the x grid, then all we need to do is that there are two things we have to find out. There are two two points we have to take care. First point is going to be we have to now create the x uh, k grid and on this k grid we will be representing the wave function Fourier transform wave function. So, we have to construct the k grid that is the uh, second step and another step we have to cons consider is the Fourier transform that wave function and then present it. So, I have to Fourier transform. So, psi x t has to be converted to phi k t. This has to be converted and this on this constructed k grid we have to now represent this phi k t. And when we are constructing this k grid we cannot just randomly construct the k grid. There is a particular um, protocol or particular restrictions we have for the Fourier transform of the grid and uh, that we will go over very soon. 
but uh, the bottom line is that we have to follow two different steps. First we have to convert the x grid to k grid and then we have to convert the function which is the Fourier transform uh, to the uh, k uh, take to, to the k grid and then we can plot this uh, as a x and y. So, x is going to be so no, not x and y it is going to be now k versus um, uh, your function is k t this is what we can plot. So, this is the basic idea behind this entire procedure of fast Fourier transform algorithm. So, let us look at the construction of the Fourier grid or reciprocal grid or k grid they are synonymous and um, uh, uh, often we uh, use uh, uh, reciprocal grid to represent the k grid or Fourier grid. So, what we uh, while constructing this, um, uh, this uh, the k grid first, uh, we will first note down uh, an interesting correspondence between the x domain and k domain. So, this is your x domain which we have to create and we know how to create uh, x domain with the help of a range functionality of psi pi and, uh, and, and while we are constructing the k grid we have to follow a particular uh, procedure. So, what are the correspondence we have between this x grid and k grid? The first correspondence is that the same n number of grid points should be present in both x and k representations. So, uh, in the x grid when you have represented the x grid let us say this is starting from x naught and this is going to x n minus 1 which means that I have n number n total n grid points we have in the x grid. In that case when we will be constructing the k grid I should have the same grid window it is called grid window which means that the same number of grid elements we have we should have. So, this is going to be n number of grid points. So, that is the first correspondence we we have understood when we are converting x grid to k grid. Second thing that when you are selecting so here I have n number, here I have n number, but when you are selecting this delta k, I cannot select delta k uh, randomly. So, second correspondence is that this delta k which is defining the spacing between two adjacent green points in the k grid, in the k grid this is the, uh, the, the spacing between um, two grid points, adjacent grid points, delta k cannot be randomly selected. In fact, theory of discrete Fourier transform abbreviated as DFT discrete Fourier transform establishes a relation which must be must be fulfilled while type transforming this x grid to k grid. So, when I am transforming this, 
this delta k and delta x they are related and how they are related the proof will not be given here is not given here just use the final result. And the proof comes from the discrete Fourier transform methodology. This discrete Fourier transform methodology is implemented in the through this FFT algorithm. So, the algorithm which we are going to use FFT algorithm, this FFT algorithm is based on the discrete Fourier transform theory and it shows that delta k delta x has to be 2 pi by n, n is the number of grid points we have or in other words this delta k when I am selecting delta k that has to be 2 pi by n delta x that is an restriction of the Fourier transform. So, we have to remember this two, uh, the, the, this restriction while we are transforming the x, uh, k grid, uh, x grid to k grid. Finally, this is the final step. So, based on this restriction we have been able to create this k grid and once we have got the k grid, we have to specify it how to get this k grid. Um, the, the fast Fourier transform algorithm, the FFT algorithm, this is the computer algorithm. based on discrete Fourier transform theory. It will allow the, uh, it will allow us to sample the spatial frequencies, spatial frequencies defined by this and that spatial frequency def will be defined by this expression where f represents this f represents a list or we can call it an array of spatial frequency components which is given by this it is going to be 0, 1, 2, then n by 2 minus 1, then minus n by 2, then minus n by 2 plus 1, up to minus 1. If n is even or if it is odd then I have to use it is going to be 0, 1, 2 then n minus 1 by 2 then n minus 1 by 2 minus n minus 1 by 2 then minus n minus 1 by 2 plus 1 up to minus 1 if n is odd. And so, this is the way FFT will create the uh, frequency components and once we know the frequency components we know how to get the, uh, the k grid points. So, k grid points will be just multiplied by uh, the this frequency component needs to be multiplied by 2 pi. So, then we can get the k grid points here that is the way we are going to construct. So, what we see that FFT algorithm or DFT this Fourier transform this uh, discrete Fourier transforms will actually create the frequency components which is first is 0 then the uh, then is going to be 1, 2 and so on 
okay and we have also negative components as well because negative components comes from the fact that in the Fourier transform it is a complex notation and once complex notation is converted we get the negative frequencies as well. In practical uh, purpose we can neglect those negative frequencies but um, for the completeness of the theory negative components should be there. We will continue this session in the next class.